coming up on West Side Stories, Grand Valley State University officials make their case to state lawmakers for an increase in funding. Plus, Riverside Park recently received a grant from the Michigan DNR. We take a closer look at how that money will be used. And GVSU President Thomas Haas sits down with us to reflect on his time as president as he nears retirement. All that and more next on West Side Stories. West Side Stories is produced by students from the Multimedia Journalism Program at Grand Valley State University. Support also comes from the School of Communications, inspiring thought, perfecting practice. Welcome to West Side Stories. I'm Preston Donikuski. And I'm Mackenzie Sorrell. During her State of the State address earlier this month, Governor Gretchen Whitmer said that affordable higher education will be one of her top priorities. And that's a welcome message for Michigan Public Universities. University officials say previous attempts to address fair and adequate funding have fallen on deaf ears. Reporter Austin Marsman takes a look at the latest attempts by GVSU officials to make their case for better funding. Education is to be a priority of government today, tomorrow, and forever. It is a public good. Leaders from Michigan's public colleges and universities, including Grand Valley State University, traveled to the state capitol earlier this month to testify before the House Subcommittee on Higher Education and Community Colleges. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Each year, the state of Michigan sets a budget and gives money to various departments and institutions. This includes the state's public colleges and universities. Wayne State has received the most funding per student over the years, while Oakland and Grand Valley tread near the bottom, with GVSU receiving the second lowest per student funding, and the lowest funding in West Michigan among the local universities. We have seen such a dramatic shift from 1963 when 90% of our appropriations for operations came from the state, 90 plus percent, now it's 17%. According to the Center on Budget and Economic Policy Priorities, state spending on public universities is nearly $9 billion below its 2008 level. At the same time, tuition has gone up. Michigan has sadly shown higher education is not a priority over the years. We've decreased allocations and in turn our per capita has steadily decreased. Where our peer states like Minnesota have invested double the allocations towards higher education and have been flourishing over the years with a steady increase of per capita for the past 30 plus years. A majority of the House Subcommittee for Higher Education are new to their roles. Kalamazoo Representative John Holdley is a senior member on the committee and he has listened to President Haas's plea for increased funding for many years. It's really great to have someone with his experience uh, being able to lead that institution and share that information and experience with the legislature. Of course, we wish him well in retirement and we're excited uh, about what's up next for Grand Valley State University. Holdley believes that higher education will see increased support under Governor Whitmer's administration. We know that Governor Whitmer is excited about investing in the success of students in higher education. In her State of the State address, she talked about the opportunity scholarships, about making co community college uh, debt-free for students, providing more support for every student going to four-year institutions in their first two years. So this is putting us on the right track. It's going to be up to the legislature uh, to make sure that we appropriate the correct amount of funding to get it done. It is all about the students, and at Grand Valley, students have been directly involved in pushing for increased state funding. Student Senator Dorian Thompson is on the state funding task force. Every year we see a tuition hike. You know, it's, we should not be living, you know, in a society where tuition's being constantly uh, risen by $500 every summer because, you know, $500, that means a lot. $500 means you can't go to the movies, you, you, I mean, for, you know, probably a year. Uh, $500 mean you have to figure out, okay, am I going to spend how much less am I going to have to buy at the grocery store? Uh, $500 means oh, do I have to work extra hours? I mean, that $500 really does affect not just students, but families all across our state, and we should be doing better. Student Senate Vice President of External Relations, Cameron Jones, works closely with Thompson and the State Funding Task Force. He says they're doing more than just lobbying. 
In about the first half of the year, it's mostly about building relationships and talking with people to help them understand how important the issue is as they move into budget negotiations. And then um, when the second part of the year hits, as we get closer to the actual budget approval process, it's about getting in there, reminding them of, of, of the importance of state funding, uh, doing a letter drive, which we do every year to help students connect with their legislators, really putting the pressure on as they're really thinking about where they're gonna put the money and hopefully they'll think about putting it toward increased state funding for Grand Valley. University leaders remain optimistic that they will see an increase in funding. Reporting from Allendale, I'm Austin Marsman. Budget talks continue as lawmakers work on big ticket items like roads, education, and overall infrastructure. Governor Whitmer is expected to introduce her first budget proposal on March 5th. While the Grand Valley State University community is preparing for the tenure of new president-elect Philomena Mantella, a GVSU legend is getting ready to pass the baton. In our next story, GVSU President Thomas Haas sits down to chat with reporter Eli Ong as the popular president reflects on his time at GVSU. When students arrive on campus at GVSU, it doesn't take long for everyone to figure out who one of the university's most beloved icons is, T. Haas. Thomas Haas, or T. Haas for short, is a staple of community culture at GVSU. Haas says he's had many fond memories of serving Grand Valley, but one in particular made him proud to be a Laker. We had a young man who uh, uh, wanted to come to Grand Valley. He's the daughter of uh, uh, some staff members here. Uh, the father passed away. Uh, and um, uh, this young man uh, had a make-a-wish to come to Grand Valley. That young man was known as Jake Yeager, a former GVSU student who was diagnosed with bone cancer at age 16. Despite the health troubles, Yeager still managed to stay on top of his grades and make it to Grand Valley. He was such a talent in musical performance. He was such a talent educationally as a, as a student. He was such a talent with his character, but he was challenged with his health. Despite his health, Yeager became the first male lead to perform at GVSU's Lynn Maxwell Keller Black Box Theater. However, Jake's medical issues continued to follow him as he was diagnosed with leukemia his senior year of college. And little did I know at that time, because I didn't, uh, how challenged he was, uh, because just uh, a few weeks later, he was in hospice. And he was a senior. And... Uh, we decided with the efforts of the dean and the faculty that we would have a commencement ceremony. The commencement ceremony took place in the Black Box Theater where Yeager last took the stage. Haas recalls the impact that Yeager had on him before he passed away. I, I tell you, he was an inspiration to me. Yeah. Haas says that he has always prioritized and valued student voices and opinions at Grand Valley State. Student Senate President Rachel Jenkin believes this is what she will miss most when he retires. He speaks to me like I'm a co-worker, um, but he also treats me like I'm a student that has a full plate, which I appreciate. And the fact that he cares about what I have to say and takes it just as seriously as anyone else that he's working with, um, I think again just shows how much he values student voice and knows that it is a part of just the whole formula of having a successful university. We caught up with some Grand Valley students who shared Jenkins thoughts on Haas. These GVSU students say Haas's commitment to the university will be missed when he is gone. His authenticity and he's just such a down-to-earth individual. He really opens himself up to students and he's that university president that really just has such a down-to-earth relationship with the student body. He's been, I think ever since I came here as a freshman, he was like kind of like, you know, a big deal. Everyone wanted to take selfies with him. So he's kind of just been, you know, like a supernatural kind of person to me, you know, someone that's like almost like elevated. I think T. Haas is a great guy. Um, I've only been here for a year now at Grand Valley, and I just love his commitment to the university and just how he is constantly going to events and just trying to make the students feel as comfortable as possible at Grand Valley State University. Constant activity is what earned President Haas's nickname. Haas says T. Haas was given to him by students on one of his very first tours around Grand Valley's campus. There must have been over 200 of them. And then said, uh, I'm Tom, great to be here. I'm looking forward to meeting many of our students and our faculty and staff and 
uh, those that are supporting this great university. And the woman, after I said that, I, I said, any questions? And a woman stepped forward and said, what can we call you? And I said, well, Dr. Haas, President Haas, uh, Tom is fine in informal settings. I like that as well. And she said, how about T. Haas? And they started chanting. Haas says from there on out the nickname is stuck and follows him all around GVSU. In fact, he says his relationship with GVSU students has inspired him to interact with them in many different ways. Bart uh, Merkel, who was the dean of students at the time, I said, you know, we might be able to have some fun. I said, why not around 10, 10.30, at the President's Ball, let's put on a skit. We're going to do the Blues Brothers Soul Man. And uh, he was Belushi, I was Ackroyd. And we got up on the stage, and uh, all of a sudden you heard this, hey, that's the President. Hey, that's the Dean. Haas says his President's Ball skits are some of his favorite memories at GBSU. While Haas enjoys having fun with students, he also wants to take the time to help transition President-elect Philomena Mantella and offer her some advice. Be yourself. I think if you can be authentic, that you can be a person that has uh, uh, the uh, wherewithal to uh, uh, carry out the mission to the best of his or her ability, uh, that's the advice that I would have. We have a mission that is noble. It's a calling to be the president of Grand Valley State University, I've, I've uh, cherished every minute. Haas says he is blown away by Mantella's credentials and is confident she will be a great president at GVSU. Looking back on his own presidency, Haas says his only regret is not having enough time to exercise. The only thing I really wish I had was a little bit more time in the day because uh, actually when I came here I had full intentions of doing more for my own uh, physical well-being with uh, working out more. Looking to the future, Haas says he is looking forward to spending time with his wife Marsha and their children away from school while also handing out one last batch of diplomas during April's graduation ceremony. From Allendale, Michigan, I'm Eli Ong. Haas says he will be taking a brief sabbatical from GVSU before returning to the classroom as a part-time professor. So if you're a student and you take a chemistry class, you may just end up with T. Haas as your professor. It's that time of the year again where Michigan high schools are graded on their performance and this year's top school was a surprise to many. Elizabeth Barnes brings us a story on how this school received an A. Michigan Math and Science Academy achieved our highest score ever on our high school report card and that was uh, over 143. So definitely doing something really well there that made them stand out. Every two years, the Mackinac Center for Public Policy in Midland releases a context and performance report card giving each high school in the state of Michigan a grade based on test scores for the last four years. In Michigan are required for their 11th graders to take uh, tests in reading and math and science and social studies. So we take all of that uh, data and, and plug it in and then we come up with a, a formula on the other end. The Mackinac Center is looking for schools that are doing a great job educating kids especially when it comes to students from low-income families. Students who come from families below a certain income level are eligible to get free lunch assistance. So there's a strong connection between students of poverty and low achievement scores. The Mackinac Center plugs data into a formula. Based on this formula, they can get a final number to examine how schools are performing. If the score is a 100 or above, they are exceeding the expectations. But if the score is below a 100, they may not be meeting the standards. But for the Michigan Math and Science Academy, this wasn't an issue. They're coming from Detroit. They're coming from South Warren. They're coming from Sterling Heights. They're coming from Oakland County. They're coming from almost going toward Jefferson. Many students who attend the school come from low-income households. So the school offers free breakfast and lunches for all of its students. They also offer many different STEM-based classes, along with extracurricular activities. Well, um, academically, uh, we try to put in more AP classes for the high school students and trying to encourage them to take part in those classes. It's not just for our benefit, but they'll get college credit for it. Shepard says the students are hardworking and determined. Like every student, they have their rough days, but students really enjoy classes and many of their teachers. It's not all academic. It's making them well-rounded. So we want them to see school 
as building them as a person. It's not just books and answering questions. And we want people to realize that we're offering as much as we can. Shepard continues to say that she's seen students achieve things they never thought were possible after attending the high school. He liked the atmosphere here. He liked the teachers here. It's not something he could see finding someplace else. And he was even on the list, uh, wait list for Harvard. So that's a fantastic accomplishment for us to have a student even in that direction. Shepard said receiving an A on the CAP report card was a dream come true and they hope to continue improving and advancing to stay on top. The staff at the Michigan Math and Science Academy is very passionate about their students and want to do whatever they can to help them reach their goals in high school and after graduation. So it's nice when we start getting classrooms where there's a waiting list and knowing that people want to be here for a reason and it's not just, oh, it's the school down the street, so it's, it's easy to get there. So the more they keep coming, um, the more excited that we are for the students. I mean, they're the ones that won the award. Many students all over have many different qualities that they bring to school. And test taking sometimes isn't the highest quality students have. One thing that makes our report card unique is that we uh, are looking at the, the factors, the circumstances that students bring with them to school and not just the raw test scores themselves. The Michigan Math and Science Academy was awarded with a plaque for achieving a 143.32 on this year's CAP report card. And according to Shepard, they plan on advancing and improving the school to keep bettering their students. In Warren, Michigan, I'm Elizabeth Barnes. GVSU Charter Schools Black River Public Academy and Grand River Preparatory High School also finished in the top 10% of the CAP report card. And that makes GVSU's portfolio of schools the third highest average scoring schools in the state. A recent Michigan DNR grant approval will provide Grand Rapids residents with plenty to do next summer. A 2013 millage pays for construction to replace the Riverside Park's dock with a universal access canoe and kayak launch. Reporter McKenna Pariseau brings us a story on what universal spaces like this mean to some community members. Grand Rapids was recently awarded a DNR grant of $150,000 for accessibility enhancements at Riverside Park. Renovations include a universal access dock, adding more handicapped spaces near the dock, and widening paved pathways to improve wheelchair access. All of those accessible ramps, I think that's a big trend that's coming to a lot of parks and recreation departments. Funding comes from a 2013 Grand Rapids Park millage, which has also funded improvements to Mooney Park, Chesaborough Park, and the only universal playground in Grand Rapids, Ottawa Hills Park. Kentwood Parks Recreation Specialist Caitlin Bush says these improvements in accessibility are happening all over West Michigan. I know Kent County and Ottawa County are working on improving their accessibility with the waterways, and that's a great resource because it's always there. The participants can do that in the future, too. The Parks Department Playground will be another local space getting an accessibility upgrade. To be considered an accessible space, facilities must meet guidelines from the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA. These can be as simple as having wide enough walkways or handicapped parking spaces, while some organizations choose to go above and beyond ADA guidelines. Um, so the whole park will kind of be revamped, and they're adding some really cool accessible features. The playground will actually have two ramps going up to it that will be wheelchair friendly, which is kind of above and beyond what the normal requirement is to be considered um, a universal design playground. Another local space that goes above and beyond in accessibility is the Mary Free Bed YMCA. I think universal space is, is a design and a mindset that we want to make sure that everything is accessible for everybody. Universal design means the building was constructed with people of all abilities in mind to be able to use all areas of the space. And that means workout equipment that is adjustable and ventilated pool areas for those with respiratory issues. But Peter admits that the goal for universal access is a constant one. I think we're always learning and we're trying to make, make sure we are meeting the needs. And no matter what type of facility you have and how much thought and design you put into it, there's always something that comes up. When we first opened up, we had a gentleman that uh, was in a wheelchair and he said, you know, I love your facility, but did you think about handrails around the pool area? We kind of said, 
you know what, that's one miss that we didn't think about. So it's really about making accessibility for all come true. Universal design and access are key principles that Darcy Lake says sets Mary Freebed apart from other facilities. She says both the organization's YMCA and Rehab Center offer resources to improve the daily life of those struggling with a disability. Our goal is we want them to get back home, get back to their communities, and do the things that they loved before. We have a simulator so they can simulate the driving experience before we actually get them on the road in a car or a van. Having access to these adaptive resources can make living life easier for disabled West Michigan residents. And having more universal spaces means access for more abilities in Grand Rapids. I think one of the biggest things is opportunity, an opportunity to feel normal an opportunity um, to try new things. It's a great way to get out in the community and just being a part of Grand Rapids, being a part of Catwood, being a part of West Michigan, feeling like they belong. Construction begins on Riverside Park in spring 2020, making it another place where everyone can feel like they belong. At Riverside Park in Grand Rapids, I'm McKenna Pariso. To learn more about local disability resources, visit maryfreebed.com. Winter is in full swing here in West Michigan, and with winter comes two popular winter activities, skiing and snowboarding. Reporter Savannah Bressman headed out to Bittersweet Ski Resort to show us how to stay safe on the mountain. Every winter, thousands really of people cool. trade their bathing suits for skis and snowboards, stop, stop. but winter sports can be dangerous. According to the National Ski Areas Association, concussions are a common injury. Dr. Michael Lawrence of Spectrum Health says that a concussion is a brain injury that could become dangerous. He says that there are multiple symptoms of concussions. It can look different for different people. Most common symptom of concussion is fatigue, but you can have a collection of other symptoms including headache, dizziness, light noise sensitivity. Lawrence says that concussions caused by winter sports are a lot more serious than if caused by another sport. I would much rather evaluate individuals that play sports like soccer or football because the amount of impact that you sustain is a whole lot less. Lawrence says that the idea of how to treat concussions has changed. In the past, the goal was to keep the person awake as much as they could be. However, now, you want that person to sleep as much as they can. 30, 40 years ago, we said no, wake people every hour. That has actually changed. And so what we recommend is that if you get a concussion, most of the time sleep is actually important and valuable and most people recover quickly if they sleep well. Lawrence says that it is better to be safe than sorry, and if you are feeling extreme symptoms such as nausea or vomiting, that it is best to get checked out by the ER. When performing sports that require such high speeds, such as skiing and snowboarding, Lawrence suggests always wearing a helmet, no matter your skill level. So any winter sports, most definitely wear a helmet, be safe. Mike Gardner of the Bittersweet Ski Resort Ski Patrol says that he has seen helmets save lives before. They do save lives. We've seen it many times. And when unfortunately we've seen people over here that have taken some pretty bad uh, hits that didn't have a helmet on. And, uh, you know, we've had some brain bleeds, some pretty serious head injuries out here. Founded in 1938, the National Ski Patrol is found at every recognized ski resort in the country. According to the National Ski Patrol, their mission is to keep everyone safe on the mountain. Well, my job is to, uh, as a ski patroller, is to help promote ski and snowboard safety um, and also um, take care of any injuries that occur on the hill, in the cafeteria, basically anywhere on property. The National Ski Patrol are the skiers and snowboarders on the mountain with the red coat and white cross. If you are injured, Gardner says that there are multiple ways to get ski patrols attention. Well, if they're hurt to where they don't think they can safely get off the hill, they should flag um, one of us down. Uh, we're the ones in the red coats with the white crosses on. Um, or tell somebody uh, and then they can radio us or if we see them and they're, you know, flagging us down, then we'll come see what's wrong with them, uh, see if they just need some assistance or if we need to provide medical treatment, uh, maybe call EMS and then uh, get them off the hill down to the patrol room. 
Besides just wearing helmets, Gertner says that there are multiple other ways to stay safe while riding. Well, I would say take a lesson. So make sure you know what you're doing uh, before you get out there and get on a very difficult run. Um, some people come out that uh, shouldn't be on certain runs that are a little too advanced for their abilities. Um, so I'd recommend a lesson first of all, and then uh, ski, snowboard within your limits. Whether you're a professional, weekend enthusiast, or just beginning, remember to always have the proper safety equipment on at all times. Reporting at Bittersweet Ski Resort, I'm Savannah Bressman. Thanks, Savannah. Hopefully there's not too much time left in this winter, so if you want to learn how to ski or snowboard, be sure to get out to a resort soon. And that's all the time we have left for today. I'm Mackenzie Sorrell. And I'm Preston Akuski. We'll see you next week. West Side Stories is produced by students from the Multimedia Journalism Program at Grand Valley State University. Support also comes from the School of Communications, inspiring thought, perfecting practice.